starts, nobody else got something for you, but keep it to yourself. I'm feeling curious, want to explore it, nothing too serious. Forget the world for a minute, before we know it, the future's the past. Seize the moment while we're in it, hold on to each other as long as it lasts. But forever, cause sometimes forever is over So It's the 2K Sports Pregame Show. Here we are with Kenny the Jet Smith and the Big Diesel Shaquille O'Neal. Ernie Johnson, you're watching the NBA on 2K Sports. Tonight, we'll see the Los Angeles Lakers playing against the Minnesota Timberwolves. Looking at Minnesota, they're not satisfied with the record over the last 10 games. Under 500 basketball, just not good enough. Looking to improve tonight. And a guy that is often overlooked on this team is Julius Randle. Gives you a little bit of everything at his position. How do you view his development, Kenny, as a player? Oh, he's a great passer for his size. You know, I haven't seen that many big guys who are able to play that fast and still read and react. Great, sees the game all around really well. You know, I love his hustle. I love his attitude. You know, the way he brings these things to a one-on-one -on -one situation, love this guy. You know, I'm a Laker guy, so really got to love the Lakers. And I thought you were a Heat guy. I am. I'm I both. Thought you were a I, thought you were, guy. I thought you were a Cleveland I thought you were guy. An Orlando guy. Magic yeah. guy and a Phoenix Suns guy. Okay. You're a man of the entire NBA. <laughs> That's okay. right. There Renaissance is. man. And that does it for us. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you later. Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the NBA. Welcome to this Thursday night in the NBA, right here on 2K Sports. This is Kevin Harlan with Clark Kellogg and Greg Anthony. David Aldridge is on our sideline. This homestand ends here for the Timberwolves as they get ready to hit the road. There's a victory here for the home team last time these guys met. Right now, they're in charge of the season series up two games to none, looking to go for three. And with the type of defense they played that day, they were able to cause a lot of mistakes. Yeah, and causing a lot of turnovers, Greg, as you well know, means cashing in on those opportunities, which really can put a team in a bad way in a hurry. And as things get ready to roll, let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's on the sideline. David? Well, Kevin, Channing Fry's floor spacing puts opposing bigs in a bind. Fry says big guys like the paint. I make them allergic to them. Their big guys want to help, but he can't. He's got to come to Fryland. Just sit out there with me. So it's a pick your poison kind of thing. Kevin, if there's one place I know you'll love, it's Fryland. <laughs> That's right, T.A. You and I both, maybe after the broadcast, you and I can swing over there for a bite. <laughs> Clark, assess the center position right now in the NBA. And I'm, I'm talking about elite centers and their place in the game. Well, the center position has changed, Kevin. You don't have a lot of back-to-the-basket centers anymore. More of the big guys are stepping out and are more like stretch fours than traditional big guys. What you have in the center position now typically are rebounders and rim protectors. Um, not many dominant scores um, on the low block. So the Timberwolves win the tip. And now the Lakers starting group. Caldwell Pope is the two with Ingram playing small forward. Randall is the four with Lopez in the middle. And it's Hart in at the point guard. 
Dunking is easy for Jimmy Butler. He's an athlete. He's got good size, and he knows how to use that vertical of his to throw it down. And so it's the Minnesota Timberwolves getting the first points of the ball game. Caldwell Pope with a wide open look. A three-pointer no good. Here's Towns and the dunk by Towns. You know, for a guy with Towns' size, I mean, to have this level of body control, tell you what, it's no wonder the contact didn't bother the shot. Poked away and stolen by Jeff T. Goes up and the dunk by Towns. And a good example there of why it's important to change ends quickly. Vitally important. I mean, if you relax for a second, you're cooked, you're toast. They learned that lesson there. The wide open look here for Lopez. And that one, no good to start him off on the night. Pulls from the top of the key and Towns the bucket on the assist by Wiggins. Towns has got six points. Lights out here, right out of the gate. Perfect 4-4 from the floor. Caldwell Pope outside. To the paint, here's Randall, and the whistle blows, so a chance here for a three-point play. Terrific body control by Randall, and and one machine. And Julius Randall, that seventh pick, back in the 14 draft out of Kentucky was a five-star recruit out of high school and, and was able to help get the Wildcats to the championship round. So this is a guy who is used to the spotlight. Mind the lanes. Mind the lanes. One shot. And that one misses. And Julius Randle with an intriguing game. A great rebounder. He's a pretty good ball handler for his size, too. Yeah, he, he likes to rip it and run. And very athletic when he gets ahead of steam. And, boy, he can be tough to contain. Here's Hart. Teague covering. Down low. Layup off the pick. Yep, that one goes. Lopez has got his first bucket of the night. Oh, he is so tough to deal with inside. Lopez just too big and too skilled. Towns, no luck. That's what they want. A good look from the mid-range game? Hey, but unfortunately, they came up empty. It's stolen by T. And here we go. Fast break. Towns is good at that. My. Oh, my goodness. Watch out. How about this combo, guys? Part super athlete, part contortionist. Towns continues to impress. That was a great angle we just saw, courtesy of Under Armour. Another Unleash Chaos moment. Now here's Ingram. He had a 21-point outing in their last game against the Pelicans in New Orleans. And he was also a terrific creator in that game as well. His assist totals show you what a fantastic all-around effort it was. Now Wiggins, after Brandon Ingram missing on that last three-pointer, pushing their lead to double digits. Wiggins has got his first two points. Starting to surge here, and we're only in the first quarter. Yeah, and they've come out strong. I mean, clearly, they've been the better team so far. And we've got a moment to look at the rebounding trend over the last few months for Gibson. In the last few months, the rebounding has, has sort of taken a bit of a dive for him, and, and a lot of factors could be the cause, but it's a trend that Coach would probably like to see him reverse. And in this first quarter, about three minutes played. It's stolen by T. And now it's Teague running. He can go all the way. Crops in the breakaway layup. And what's your take, guys, in the hustle stats for the Timberwolves? Boy, they've really amped up the pressure at the defensive end, guys, and have piled up the steals in the early going. And the other thing that's been equally as effective is the fact that they've gotten out on the fast break. A lot of points coming in transition. Here's Gibson. Rebounded by Hart. The Minnesota Timberwolves come into this one following a loss to the Rockets. Yeah, that was more than just a tough loss. That, that was a complete embarrassment. Yeah, the woodshed is what we call that. They annihilated them, simply had no answers for how to slow them down. And that one's good. Wiggins. Yeah, they're going to have a nice little run here. Lakers trail by 14. 
So timeout called here. The first for Los Angeles. Defeated by the Pelicans in their last game. They'll try to put that one behind them. Yeah, and in a hostile environment, they did not rise to the occasion, especially on the defensive side. Yeah, there was no shine on that effort. Really lackluster. Their D was nowhere to be found. This far into the schedule, we have several teams looking to turn things around and save their season. Clark, when you think about that, what's the best mindset those teams can have? You know, I think it's a combination mindset, Kevin. One is to keep your eye on the big picture. What can we become? Who are we? What are our habits? Are we doing the things we need to do to give ourselves the best chance? And then the attention to detail. I think those two things have to be lockstep. The big picture in mind and then attention to detail. to see some numbers for Carl Anthony Town. He's getting around 20 points per, 12 rebounds, and two assists. And the numbers, while pretty outstanding, I mean, we've now come to expect that from this guy. Completely in harmony with what his coach is trying to do there. Just a marvelous all-around talent. And there it is for him. And the story here, Kevin, early on, is how well they've shot the basketball. Very high percentage so far, and if you want to start a game hot, that's the way to do it. Now here's Ingram. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for him. Hits the three-point bomb. Nice job. Very good rhythm. Randall on the catch and shoot. And it's Wiggins with the jam. They're pounding it inside once again. They have taken over this game physically. Schooling them right now. Taking them to the woodshed. Super aggressive and owning the paint. Here's Hart following the bucket by the Timberwolves. And it's good for two. Ingram's got his first basket of the night. Gotta like seeing Ingram get going down underneath the rim. Just another dimension of his game that he continues to develop. That's smothering defense. Chicken and gravy defense, not giving him an inch there. That's how you guard the inside. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Rejected by T. And here we go. Fast break. Towns has got it. The Lakers with the rebound. Lopez outside. To the inside. And the dunk by Lopez. The big fella with the big finish. Lopez rocking that rim. Here's Towns. Good D by Lopez. Well, he mistimed it just a skosh. Don't think the defense really had an impact. I think he just flat out missed it. Wide open. Here's Randall. Had a chance there to cut it to single digits, but it's off target. Here's Towns, and the dunk by Towns. And already with the commanding lead, a terrific offensive performance. Yeah, and the execution, time and time again, right on point. They're running their offense to perfection. Now here's Ingram. Steady offensive output from him, averaging more than 16 points a game. And the dunk by Towns. Yep, another one from Towns. There's no limit to what he can score when he's in this kind of rhythm. Ingram passes to Hart. And Gibson over to help. Down low. Lopez kicks to Randall. He gets it in there. Randall's got seven points in the game. Minnesota leading by 13. Here's Gibson, and it's Gibson finishing it off. Yeah, you know, not every point guard would be able to find an open man right there, but T is always looking for the right play. Los Angeles has gone one of five from downtown in the first quarter. Points out there have been hard to come by. Ingram kicks to Randall, and the rejection by Towns. And now the Timberwolves on the break over Lopez. Carl Anthony Towns again. He's got 16. Defensively giving up far too many open rhythm looks. And to battle back, they've got to shore up the defense. I mean, there's no other way to come back from a deficit unless you play good defense. Los Angeles calls timeout. Well, Towns does so many things on the floor. Already an elite post score. 
But Greg, one area that he has struggled with at times is his defense against other bigs. And, and I think he'll continue to improve in that area. What, what happens with young guys, though, is oftentimes you're improved how good I am mode when you're young and you lose sight of some of the things that help you win games. And, and I think that's one reason why he had one of the worst defensive RPMs in the entire league. But young bigs tend to take a bit longer to develop into great defenders, and I expect he will follow in that line. Yeah, and the amount of points they've given up here in the paint, that, that's what they got to talk about. Absolutely, Greg. I mean, they're getting crushed, killed, hammered, pulverized in the post. Some changes for Minnesota. Jang, he's checked in for Towns. Bialica comes in for Tosh Gibson. And it's Crawford in for Jimmy Butler. Now, here's Thomas. He's certainly been a consistent piece of their offense, averaging about 14 and a half points a game. And the ball goes out of bounds. Last touch by Jang. Ingram with it. Now defended by Wiggins. Five to shoot. And they've done a nice job controlling the defensive backboard to start this game. Not one second chance bucket allowed. That is finishing off good defense. And you know, Gordy Jang is a big man who can play both the four and the five. He doesn't stand out on offense, understated there, but very valuable and solid and consistent. Uh, he's a rim protector and a space eater, but also a pretty effective rebounder too. The first free throw is good. And Jang, a solid challenger at the rim with his shot blocking. Yeah, Clark, he doesn't mind having a secondary role on a team as long as they are winning. Yeah, you know what? He's really comfortable in his own skin and what his role is. He's got great awareness of how to help his team. Never tries to do too much on the offensive end. And he's really good at playing with any other type of big guy that the Wolves put on the floor. Good on both. And the NBA is at coaches who are as legendary as any player. With that in mind, Clark, who is your pick as the greatest coach of all time? Man, I can't even begin to have an answer for that one. There's some guys that jump out, though, when you think about that list, who would be on it. Greg Popovich, for sure. Um, Phil Jackson would have to be included on that list. Fred Arbach. And Chuck Daly for the way he was able to manage his players. Um, Pat Riley. You'd have to consider him as part of uh, being on somebody worthy of that list as well. And I'll even go back a little farther and throw Lenny Wilkins in the mix. I thought he was really good with a number of different teams that he coached. With a break in the action, let's take a peek at the real stats, real scores from the real NBA and the top rebounding teams in the league this season. The Lakers second. You know, it's not necessarily a glamour stat, but, but make no mistake, their top-notch board work has been a huge key to their success. And right from the start, Kevin, they've been pounding the glass. Most of those 50-50 balls also going their way. Well, I don't think there's any question about it. They came focused and ready to play. I mean, they're doing everything they can to um, put things in their favor. You earn that, and they're actually earning it well right now. It's good. Teague's got his second basket of the game. The ball movement on this run has been fantastic and is a big part of why they've been able to get these good looks. Knocked away. And now here comes Teague leading the break. In the hoop for his third make from the field. He's three for four thus far in the contest. And really pushing the tempo. Fast break buckets, a big factor for them offensively. And you know what, guys? Despite their pace of play, they seem to be the fresher team. Running the defense ragged. And Isaiah Thomas, the 16th and final pick of the 2011 draft. Uh, Greg, he definitely plays with a chip on his shoulder. Yeah, I call it the little man syndrome. <laughs> he's driven to prove himself. I mean, he's overcome the odds. In, in league history, only nine players, 5'9 or shorter, have played 1,000 minutes or more in a season. And he's not just playing. He's playing at the highest level.
Two shots. And he knocks down the first one. I love the complimentary aspect of this group now. You know, you've got the young talent, but you've brought in some veteran leadership here for the Timberwolves. The duo of Wiggins and Carl Anthony Towns kind of gave the confidence to them to go out and acquire a superstar in his prime like Jimmy Butler. Both free throws good from Isaiah Thomas. And great, the core of this Timberwolves team is Wiggins and Towns. And, you know, rarely do you... Oh! Oh, oh yeah. wow! Are you... Oh, my goodness. Making the impossible look easy. Wiggins with the great creativity in the air. He typically hangs in the air a little longer than the average bird, though. Now here's Thomas. Double team on Thomas. And here we go. Wiggins heading to the hoop. Oh! oh. Hey, hey, hey. Woo -hoo. Wow. Great speed by Wiggins there. I mean, makes him a dominant finisher in transition. Speed kills, and oftentimes you can't control it. Here's Thomas. Double team on Thomas. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. Well, you know, historically, the Lakers have been a glamour franchise and have been able to attract top-tier free agents. The temptation exists to skip any rebuilding and instead look to reload with new stars. We'll see if that pays dividends going forward. Now, gentlemen, two shots. Two shots. That free throw, no good. And Coach Walton has said, when you build from within, you control your own destiny. What do you think, Clark? Should they build slowly but surely or look to land the, the big free agent? Well, I think you do a combination of the two, but slow and steady usually wins the race. I know in this day and age we want everything microwave, but one of the questions for the Lakers is how many of these young guys have real star potential? Who are those guys you can build around? And if you don't see it, the temptation grows stronger to go out and try to find that ready-made star. Los Angeles has gone one of five from downtown in the first quarter. Points out there have been hard to come by. And Jones over to help. And the foul called on Tyus Jones. That's his first foul. So it's the Lakers now. Shot by Ennis. Nobody around. It's good from long range. Minnesota leading by 19 points. Here's Jang. It's good, only a few seconds into the shot clock. And they are attacking the rim and getting great results. And how? I mean, they're taking this defense to task, taking them to school. Every one of their last 10 points have come in the paint. Now here's Thomas for three. Fry, good, and the assist goes to Thomas. Fry has got himself on the board with three there. Yeah, and that's back-to-back -back threes. The D just seems to be slacking off a little bit. You know, far hard from start to finish on that play. Defended the shot and then finished it off with the rebound. Here's Jang and finished off by Jang. And if you're wondering why Jang shoots such a high percentage from the field, look no further than effort. Outside Thomas. 55 seconds left in the first quarter of the game. I'm shocked that didn't turn into three points. I mean, he makes you pay on those nearly every time. Got that one up quick. And it's coming easy for them right now. Five baskets in a row in the paint. And I say, hey, if it keeps working, go to it. Stay with it. I mean, until the defense responds and provides more resistance, keep making them pay. And Muhammad kicks to Crawford. He goes up again. The Elitza with the bucket. Maia has got his second bucket tonight. And they've repeatedly probed inside 
in the first half, guys, and, and it's paid off. Here's Ennis. And the Lakers with another miss. Here's Jones. And he banks in the layup. How about the passing? They are moving the ball without any thought, without any individual agenda. Yeah, and it's really fun to see that kind of unselfishness. Really hard not to appreciate all the assists they've racked up. And you can see there the defender gets caught up on the pick. I think he's got to be more aggressive, stronger, getting through those screens. Can't allow shooters that kind of space to pull the trigger. It's been all about Carl Anthony Towns for the Minnesota Timberwolves. They kept going to him again and again, and he delivered with a monster quarter. And we'll be back with you shortly. Welcome back, folks. We'll see if we're in store for a more tightly contested quarter as we move here into the second. And guys, we've seen a confident-looking Timberwolves team out there. Getting high percentage looks, wearing down that defense on the inside. Grinding away down low, man. Just filing them down. Love the bully ball method. Paying off well. Lakers shooting the ball at 42%. Bialica is out there with Jang. Then it's Jones. And it's Crawford, and it's Muhammad in at the small forward position. So that's the lineup for Minnesota. 12 straight points off of three-pointers, and the D looks shell -shot. And guys, now that they're rolling from out there, the defense has to really get up into them. You've got to almost be in their jerseys to try to deny those looks. Here's Ennis. No good from outside. The Timberwolves shooting has been just uncontainable. 72%. And he makes that one. Muhammad's got four this quarter. Yeah, he's a powerful wing player, Kevin. Muhammad, I think, likes to operate in the painted area best. There's the pick. And it sets the screen for Thomas. Here's Kuzma. And that one comes up a bit short. Just a solid performance on the interior. The rebounding has been off the charts. Yeah, you look across the board, it's actually sizing up shaping up to be a great game. I mean, strong performances throughout, and they've really been strong on the glass. And Clark, as you've watched the game at both the college and pro levels over the years, what has been the biggest change for you in your view of that? Well, you know what, Kevin? There are a couple of things. The athleticism, the real emphasis on training and strengthening the core, meaning from your kneecaps to your sternum. The work that's done to train the hamstrings and quads and glutes and that core area as a place of power, as your center of power, is one Shooting of the two. significant changes I've seen, not just in basketball, but all sports. And it's benefited the athletes greatly and the overall athleticism. And then from a plane standpoint or on the floor standpoint, I think the three-point shot. I think that's been the biggest dramatic change in the game. You know, Clark, at the end of last season, the Timberwolves unveiled this new logo they're sporting this season. They thought it was time for an update, and you have to say it looks pretty sharp. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, most teams in the NBA want to mix their logo up every so often to keep it modern and up-to-date and fresh. The Wolves have a young group and felt it was the right time to re-examine the logo, and I can't argue with them. Sometimes a little change like that can pay big dividends. Here's Muhammad, and the dunk by Muhammad. And I think this is where Muhammad's most dangerous, being aggressive, attacking off the bounce. That's his strength right now. The Lakers have gone one of three to start out the second quarter. Thomas kicks to Fry. Back to Thomas. Pass to Kuzma. Fires the three. That's good. And it's Thomas picking up the assist. Thomas got his third assist on the night. And how about the bounce pass there being used to perfection? Kevin, a big guy with an emerging skill set. Jang ruling the paint there. Nice play. Thomas kicks to Ennis. Jones against Thomas. Passes to Ennis. Lopez a screen. And Fry has it in the corner. Offensive rebound. The shot's good from Lopez. Lopez has got his third bucket of the night. He 
Because of that big body and seven-foot frame, Lopez a handful to keep off the glass. And fought hard to make his way to the rim, but give the D credit, did just enough to force him to clank that one. And we've got an update here, so let's check in with David Aldridge reporting from the sideline. Well, guys, analytics has taken over the NBA, but Minnesota coach and president of basketball operations Tom Thibodeau says it doesn't tell you everything. He said analytics can measure a lot of things, but it's very difficult to measure drive. The magic is in the work. Kevin? And Tom Thibodeau makes a good point, D.A. Analytics is certainly helpful, but it doesn't capture everything. Not the most natural ball handler now, but Jang does get up to momentum quickly on the drive. I mean, this doesn't look pretty or smooth, but it is effective. It's going to be out of bounds. Los Angeles will retain possession. Some changes for Minnesota. Carl Anthony Towns checked in for Jang. Gibson comes in for Bielitsa, and it's Butler in for Jamal Crawford. Los Angeles calls timeout. I just love what Muhammad can do, Clark, for a team coming off the bench. Always looks to attack the basket, and when he is locked in, can function as one of the better six men in the league. Yeah, you know, for some guys, Kevin, being a rotational player off the bench is a hand-in-glove fit, and I think Muhammad falls into that category. I mean, you can give him a start if you needed to. He's not the best defender. But you love what he brings on offense, particularly if he's coming off the bench. Let's take a look at how the shots have been divided up between three-point shots and two-point shots for the Lakers. Lopez dishes to Thomas. And the pass to Hart. Caldwell Pope with it. He's had some playing time, but no scoring yet from him. And it's out of bounds. Uh, they say it was last touched by Towns. Clock at four. Double team on Thomas. Here's Randall from outside off the mark. A slight rebound advantage for them. One more column in their favor and it's all adding up. Well, you take a look at all of the stats, the team stats, that is, and that's one of the many areas that they've had the advantage, and as a result, they've got a big lead. And, Clark, one thing you have to love about Towns is just how self-aware and humble he is. He's always looking to hone his game, and even when he puts up a big night, he can look at the tape and find something that he's got to improve on. Yeah, that's admirable. His humility and his selflessness, being aware of what's going on, where he needs to get better, and that's part of why I think he's a leader on this team. He'll own his mistakes, and he also is owning his personal development and improvement. So the future's bright for this guy. Clark, when you were playing, what was your game day routine like? Well, it was simple. I didn't complicate things, Kevin. I tried to get a good meal, was just beginning to learn how to eat properly and best for my body. And then I would always try to get an hour to two hour pregame nap. That goes all the way back to high school. I enjoy just getting off my feet. Sometimes I would fall asleep completely. Other times I would just kind of drift into a light sleep. But just having that routine of resting before games was part of how I got ready to try to serve the other guys up. Double team on Thomas. Lopez, 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 Lopez. Caldwell Pope against Bump. Towns with the steal. They push it up for on three. Oh, and the jam by Towns. You know, what makes Towns so dangerous in transition? He can beat you with the shot, or he can beat you at the rim. Los Angeles has gotten half their shots from three-point range to go down in the second quarter. Three of six from downtown. Randall kicks to Lopez. Rebounded by the Timberwolves. 
There's Muhammad. That one goes in for him, too, making it look easy. He's now four for four. They should continue to get the ball inside. The defense struggling to contain them. And when you make five in a row in close like that, it also takes pressure off your perimeter guys, too. Double team on Thomas. Can they get it? And the Lakers with another miss. It's a plus five advantage for them in rebounding after that one. And he was fouled on the way up. Two free throws now for him. And the Lakers breathe a sigh of relief this summer, retaining their lottery pick that had a greater than 50-50 chance of falling to the 76ers. And you know what, Kevin? That's a huge boost for the franchise, drafting Lonzo Ball. They kept their pick, but that means they will lose their 2018 pick. No upside to losing games this season. They're going all in. The free throw drops for Towns. Luke Walton is the 26th coach in Lakers history, and it was love at first sight for the Lakers. I mean, after one interview with the team and the top brass, the other interviews were all canceled, and the dream job was his for the taking, and I think he's going to turn out to be quite a good coach in the NBA. And Towns drops them both, and he called it his dream job. But a lot of risk for Luke Walton, certainly in Los Angeles. Lakers had just gone through the worst season in franchise history. Yeah, and, you know, not to mention the unrest in the front office, Kevin. In the end, though, for Luke, it was just too good an opportunity to pass up. He's a SoCal guy. He won rings in L.A., and it wasn't the safe move, but sometimes the best moves require some risk. And it was where he wanted to be. And stolen by Butler. I don't like that decision there on the entry pass. Not with the defender right there ready to pick it off. I mean, you got to be honest. So the transition defense just has been lacking. Yeah, fast break points all over the place. I mean, at some point, you've got to make the commitment to sprint back and then slow them down and stop the ball. Thomas passes to Randall. Shot clock at five. Here's Hart. Loses his man off the screen and lays it up and in. Hart's got his first points in this one. Here's Wiggins. And a lot of contact on that one, so he'll shoot two here. Julius Randall picks one up. And still varying opinions out there of what Andrew Wiggins can and can't do. But one thing that's indisputable, he's an incredible scorer. Uh, whether it's half-court transition, he can flat-out fill it up in a hurry. First free throw is good. And Wiggins, his young career, just getting better and better at scoring, Greg, while increasing his workload. Yeah, and, and very few scorers can do that, especially from that two-guard spot. Uh, Wiggins has that special talent where he can flat-out carry an offense. Scary to think that this is a kid who is just scratching the surface. And he can't hit the second. A decent free throw shooter is Wiggins, trying to become more than that, though, given how often he gets himself to the line. Timberwolves on offense. They've got a 12-2 run in progress. The shot comes out, and the Lakers will go the other way with it. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. Pass to Hart, shoots the three, and the call will be against Julius Randle. That'll be his second foul of the game. Timberwolves have gone 8 of 12 since the start of the second quarter. That's a really high percentage, hitting around 67%. And Towns gets it to go. And now you see them starting to really work the ball inside. Lakers have gone 6 of 14 shooting here in the second. Thomas kicks to Caldwell Pope. They double him with Butler. 
And it's out of bounds. The Lakers able to retain possession here. And here are the best transition teams in the NBA. We're looking at the real stats, the real scores from the real NBA. The Lakers second. You know, it's an entertaining style of play. And look, I mean, those are the baskets you want if you've got the legs for it. Scoring becomes a lot easier. And listen, sometimes even the best of us are going to miss the easiest of opportunities. And the dunk by Towns. Staying alert and aware. Wiggins sees his man flash to an open spot. Passes right on the money. Knocked loose. Towns dishes to T. Back to Towns. Here's Gibson. A rebound by the Lakers. Oh, you, you've got to be able to deliver when you get a bunny like that. That's just too easy of a shot to miss. Oh, and here we go with Gibson. Nobody back. That one good for two. And you can see now they're starting to push the tempo to good effect. Fast break points, the edge goes to them, and those quick buckets are easy money. I love to see that. And the Lakers with another miss. And they've got a big lead, not just on the scoreboard, but really in the rebounding numbers as well. And what I like about it, Greg, it's been a physical brand of basketball. It's had a little sandpaper element to it. Gritty and, and rough, but that's how you win games. And there's the feed to Caldwell Pope. They can't stop the run with that one. Kevin, you can understand the shot selection. I mean... He wanted to go back at him and just came up short on the triple. And that one clearly a foul. Gets the whistle and two shots coming up. Julius Randle picks one up. And watching Jimmy Butler, he just offers so much on offense from a scoring standpoint. You know, obviously he can get to the rack and, and draw the defense to him. Also really improved his ability to knock it down from beyond. Just a complete offensive player. A free throw drops for Butler. And Greg, as you said, Butler is a threat to score from any part of the floor. It's a bit of a dying art, though, hitting that mid-range jump shot. Butler also does a great job of getting to the line. That's increased over the course of his career. Just a well-rounded offensive player. The Lakers making a switch here. Ingram's checked in. And so Butler nails both of them. As we've gotten closer to halftime, their style has become more and more physical. Boy, it certainly appears to be the case, Greg. I mean, they've spent a lot of time at the foul line this quarter, and that's the result of attacking the rim and being physical. Lopez kicks to Caldwell Pope. Another miss by Caldwell Pope. And they just tried everything to stem the tide here, but nothing seems to work. Yeah, they can't find anything. They're lost right now. Everything working against them. Just increasing their advantage. And right now, they're in a zone on both ends. Yeah, you know, it's got to be terribly deflating for the opposition. Boy, they look helpless. Really getting beat up, physically and emotionally. The shot's good from Lopez. And started hot, and he's only gotten hotter. And it's Wiggins with the jam. Yeah, it's another basket for Wiggins, Kevin. Impossible to cool off. I mean... He's got every chamber field tonight. They've been struggling here on offense. Yeah, a bit of a dry spell for sure. Randall kicks to Lopez. Picked by Randall. Ingram wide open. Misses the three. And physically, there's no doubt they've been the stronger team. A plus 10 rebound advantage tells you all you need to know. The shooting numbers just aren't there yet in the quarter. Pass to Hart. Takes a three, trains the three-pointer. Hart's got five points now this quarter. And Ingram isn't just a sensational scorer. He can also dish the rock. Nice pass that time. What excellent vision by Jeff Teague out there. And Los Angeles guys uh, shooting 38% in the second quarter. Offensively, they look a little bit confused. 
for three. Caldwell Pope. And again, Los Angeles with the triple. Set him up well there. Brooke Lopez showing his vision and willingness as a passer. And the dunk by Towns. Yeah, I mean, he's been orchestrating all game at a high level. Yeah, making his teammates better through his passing, Greg. You know about that because you did it. Great job sharing the ball. Well, I appreciate it, partner. Always important to have somebody keep rhythm in the game. And there's the goal on Carl Anthony Towns. That'll be his second foul of the game. Aggressiveness is fine, but you can't be this over-aggressive. I think he's got to dial it back some. They need him on the floor. Here's what Minnesota's going with right now. Gorky Dang's checked in for Carl Anthony Towns. Biel Itza comes in for Taj Gibson. And it's Crawford in for Butler. And how many extra possessions have they gotten because of that rebounding edge? Well, it's been a bunch, and I think it's made the difference in the game. I mean, they've actually done a great job on the board. Hart the pass to Kuzma over Teague. Will not go. This is off the front iron. The Timberwolves shooting 69%, showing you what a well-oiled offense looks like tonight. Terrific timing on that pass, placing it in a great spot, ideal spot, where his teammate could score. To the paint, deflects the pass. 105 left here in the second, and finished off by Jang. And guys got careless with the ball there, and the turnover leads to the big stuff. Once he came up right with the steal, he went straight on the attack. That's exactly the way to do it, too, Kevin. Go hard to the bucket, and don't let them set up the defense. Here's Kuzma, and the shot is long. And a big lead for them on both the scoreboard and the backboard thus far. Yeah, rebounding has been a big key in this one, Greg. They've asserted their will and have taken control on the glass. Ennis kicks to Randall. Twenty-seven seconds left to play here in the second quarter. Four on the shot clock. Ennis with the ball. Picked up by Teague. Yep, it counts. Ennis has got five now. Absolutely fearless. I mean, a, a nice subtle adjustment there going up against Wynn. I could not say it any better. Showing you some real focus, taking it inside against the bigger man. Pass to Kuzma. They set the pick. Kicks to Randall. It could go. And through the first half, a pretty lopsided affair. Minnesota on top, running away with this one. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Kevin, thanks. Here with Jimmy Butler. Jimmy, you have come a long way in this league. When you look at your career now versus when you came in, how different is it? Much different. Um, I think on the floor, I'm supposed to do a lot more on both ends of the floor. And um, off the floor, I think it's still the same. People recognize my hair. <laughs> well, it is a unique style, Jimmy. Thanks a lot. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks, David. And we'll be back shortly following halftime to get the third quarter underway. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey, everybody. Ernie Johnson joined by Kenny the Jet Smith and Shaquille O'Neal. Welcome to the NBA Halftime Show on 2K Sports. Been working out. What a start it was for Carl Anthony Towns. He had 29 points, three steals, and nine rebounds. And uh, Kenny, what did you see out there from the Timberwolves? There's so many things you can say about the development of Carl Anthony Towns. Just as accurate from the outside as he is in the post. Defends on the perimeter and the rim. Shaq, your take on the Lakers. Well, they're obviously facing a hot shooting team tonight. That combined with a lackluster effort on defense, recipe for disaster, Ernie. Without major improvements defensively, this game is O-V-A. Over. And that's all we can do for now. As the second half begins, we get you back to Kevin Harlan.
The buildings of downtown Minneapolis all lit up on this lovely evening. Welcome back, everyone, to the Twin Cities. Welcome back, everybody. Third quarter just about to get going here in what has been so far a runaway game. Pearl Anthony Towns has been sensational. And I loved in that first half that they were patient, looked for good shots, and knocked them down. Yeah, I liked how they took the initiative. They were really locked into what they wanted, not letting the defense dictate their shot selection. Well, we're getting back to the action now. It's been a one-team show so far. We'll see if that changes here in the third. And for the Lakers, they're shooting not great, 40% for the game. Starting off the second half, here's Luke Walton's five. Randall is the four with Lopez in the middle. Caldwell Pope is the two with Ingram playing small forward. And it's Hart in at the one. Teague. And Teague is right there. Teague's got the first points to start out the third quarter for the Timberwolves. And guys, the defense of Teague is underrated. Excellent instincts. Uh, and he takes reasonable chances on defense. Let's the three fly. Hart, no good. All the time in the world to get that one off. And the Lakers, Greg, have acquired some intriguing young talent. Do you see this group blossoming into elite status? I mean, there's still some question marks. Injuries ha have been an issue. Uh, I do see some all-star potential for some of their young fellas. Superstar potential, though, mm, tougher to say. They've got something to build on, though, and that's key. Here's Towns. Uses the glass to finish the layup. Towns has got 33. And of the last six baskets, five have come on the interior. This is just smash mouth physical basketball, guys. Towns comes with a double team. Pope loose. Towns with the steal. Here's Wiggins, and Wiggins throws it down. Terrific pick by Wiggins, then kicks it ahead, turning defense into offense. They're really on their heels at this point. Yeah, on both ends of the floor, Kevin. They've lost some confidence along the way. Caldwell Pope kicks to Ingram, and there's the defensive three-second call. For Los Angeles, they have missed two free throws in the game, going five for seven. And you, you really got to be in awe at the way that Contavious Caldwell Pope plays defense. So disciplined in this era of three-point shooting to kind of stay home on fakes and, and playing great position defense. He just sticks to his man like glue. Here's Hart, T covering. Now the dish to Caldwell Pope. Five on the clock. The Lakers need to get a shot off here. Here's Hart. No good on the triple. Now with Caldwell Pope, it's not like he's playing defense on just anyone. Greg he usually draws the opposing team's top score as his nightly assignment. Yeah, and he's earned that responsibility because of his play. I mean, typically plays a ton of minutes and, and never slows down during the game. All around fantastic defensive. That's going to be over and back. Not watching for the line that time. And a look now at the various locations of the shots taken so far for Wiggins. What a display we've seen from them so far. Every half open look they've gotten, they've knocked down and show no signs of letting up. Right now, they are in the driver's seat. As long as they can keep their rhythm on offense, they'll just steamroll this team the rest of the way. Butler against Caldwell Pope. And Butler gets it to go. And the jump shot has been a dimension of this game where they've had a clear advantage. Greg, they keep pulling up and watching them go down. It's a really nice thing to see. Lopez dishes to Ingram. And stolen by Wiggins. And now the Timberwolves on the break. Towns with the ball. The steal then right into the fast break. Towns with excellent awareness for his age. Very mature player despite being a young buck. For Los Angeles, they've gone 0-3 and are still looking for that first bucket here in the second half. They get a hand on it. Higgins outside. 
And he got the whistle, so he'll have a three-point play opportunity. Boy, I tell you, when Wiggins attacks now, good things seem to happen. Now a potential and one boy. This young fellow's got major talent. Well, Andrew Wiggins, the pride of Canadian basketball, he is shown to be a very durable player, Clark, in his short career. Rarely misses a game if he ever does and plays a ton of minutes each night out. Yeah, and Kevin, even as a rookie, Wiggins logged heavy minutes. He often played north of 40 minutes a game. But he's so important to this team because of his impact at both ends of the floor. And now we're three minutes into the third quarter of play. Thomas passes to Lopez. He kicks it to Ingram. Here's Fry, and there's the bucket. Stay with it on the offensive glass, getting it done. Fry's got five points so far. Inside, Towns wide open. That balls, nice feed that time from Wiggins. Wiggins has got his sixth assist on the night. Los Angeles has gotten blank from three-point land so far in the third. Still 0 for 3. No good from Fry. And low percentage look on that one. Not sure what he was thinking. I agree with you. Not a good shot. Not good offense. They can get a much better look than that. But they're going to need to be patient to do so. Thomas kicks to Caldwell Pope. Fry dishes to Caldwell Pope. Lopez a screen on Butler. And there's the call on Carl Anthony Towns. And that'll be his third foul so far. Minnesota making some changes. Shabazz Muhammad comes in for Wiggins, and Jones subbed in for Teague. Jones against Thomas. Lopez, a screen on Jones. And here's Fry for three. Muhammad grabs the board. Seems like he's in a hurry. He's kind of rushing his shot. Clearly out of rhythm right now. That's a big reason why they're losing. Two points. That one goes. Jones has got his third basket of the night right there. And they've had assists now on their last three baskets. Thomas kicks to Fry. Here's Kuzma. And again, no good by the Lakers. It's almost like he's trying to make things hard on himself. You know, he's just got to slow the game down, try to get some easy ones. Dishes it to Thomas. And the three off target. The Timberwolves shooting just phenomenal here tonight. 73% from the field. Offensive rebound. Gibson lays it in without an inch of room around him. Gibson's got eight. They're doing a really good job of getting the ball inside and attacking the paint. That's an area they have completely dominated. Well, once they recognized the advantage they had inside, it made a lot of sense just to continue to attack that area. He is just really almost playing for the other team. The shooting has just been poor. Guys, we've seen a lot of turnovers in this one. Yeah, focus, focus, focus. Just make the simple play. No good from Fry. Fry has gone two for seven, struggling a bit. Here's Muhammad. Here's Towns. An easy two points on the layup. Towns has got 41. Hey, scoring off misses, that's easy buckets. Something Towns has the length and tenacity to do on a regular basis. Thomas kicks to Lopez. That's good, and it's Thomas picking up the assist. Lopez has gone an even 50% from the field, shooting 6 for 12. Here's Gibson, and it's Gibson finishing it off. Tell you what, you got to give Butler credit. He's good at sensing when his guys are wide open, and he gets the ball to him right away. The Lakers shooting just 35%. They've got to get better looks. Lopez sets a screen for Caldwell Pope. Lopez a screen. Lock at six. Here's Kuzma, and hits one. Maybe he's ready to get back on track. Kuzma's got his second basket of the night. Nice job exploiting that mismatch. Realized he had a smaller defender on him and went right to the mid-range J. Guys, he has been a major factor, big time. Outstanding at getting quality looks and, and knocking them down. Double team on Thomas. They set the pick. Lakers passing it around. The shot's good from Kuzma. Kuzma's got five points now this quarter. 
and you can see there the defender gets caught up on the pick. I think he's got to be more aggressive, stronger, getting through those screens. Can't allow shooters that kind of space to pull the trigger. And you can see it there in a nice rhythm in terms of shooting. It's been that way the entire second half. And you know, Greg, it's hard to ask for much more than that because they're getting to their spots and they're knocking down the shots. For three, Fry, it's good from long range. Fry has got eight. First three of the half, second of the game. Can he heat up? Tremendous combination of power and finesse there. I mean, once Towns gets to the rim, it's a wrap. Thomas against Jones. Now here's Thomas. 14 points for him. Takes the three. And again, Los Angeles with a triple. And defensively, you have got to extend to their shooters. They have been on fire this half. Well, you know, the D just hasn't been there for real. I mean, these shooters are getting any perimeter shot they want. It's a bunch of warm-up jump shots out there. Caldwell Pope kicks to Fry. Offline with his three. Fry has gone three of nine shooting. And you look at the history of the Timberwolves, and there have been some incredible players. Clark, uh, which Timberwolf player uh, always was your favorite to watch, and why? Well, Kevin Garnett was fun to watch wherever he played. Clearly, his early career was in Minnesota, and his intensity, his focus, his versatility, his two-way prowess. Sam Mitchell, guy I got to know when he was in Indiana, just one of those solid veteran guys. And then Kevin Love, a double-double 2010 guy. It was really good while he was there, too. Rare you'll see him miss such an open look. Basket counts. And 12 points for Shabazz Muhammad. Nice move on the inside. The defense is there, but Muhammad with the skills and confidence to convert nonetheless. Double team on Thomas. And out of bounds as the Timberwolves gain possession. And while we've got a second here, now let's take a look at the real stats, the real scores from the real NBA, and find out who the steal leaders are. Fifth, Jimmy Butler. And he's been a rock for them defensively. Just so many steals for him this year, and, and so many of them have been in key moments for his team. Gibson, and again it's Minnesota. Got himself into really good position there. Can't pass that shot up, guys. The Lakers shooting 37% so far in the third quarter, and they're not satisfied with this lack of offensive execution. And the shot no good, a bit short. And that's the shot you want to create. They just can't get it to fall. That's what I call an everything but. Good execution, just didn't knock it down. But you're right, they're happy with that shot. Caldwell Pope kicks to Fry. Tipped away. Now the pass to Kuzma. Let's it go from the baseline and nails it. Kuzma's got 12 points in just the second half. And he has starting to turn it on now after that slow start. Now flying high and throwing it down with the one hand. Woo, one of his favorite moves right there, guys. Does it as well as anybody, fellas. Tremendous skill while in the air. He dishes it to Lopez. And he could not get that one to go. A lot of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. And, you know, the big man, Brooke Lopez, because he's so skilled as a scorer, he doesn't get the credit he deserves defensively. He's not the most fleet-footed, that's for sure. But inside, I mean, he uses his size well to protect the rim. And he knocks down the first one. And the other critique of Brooke Lopez at the defensive end has been his rebounding. Not, Clark, the kind of numbers you expect from a seven-footer. But ironically, Kevin, his team rebounds better when he's on the floor, though. Both he and his brother Robin are very good at boxing out, using their body and their size. And that leaves their teammates available to chase down rebounds. Well, you look at the Lakers as an organization, and we know historically one of the great sports organizations in any sport. 
The reputation, though, has been slipping a bit in recent years. The front office moved last season, bringing what they hope will be some stability and certainly a bit more prestige to the team. And out of bounds as the Timberwolves gain possession. Kevin, let's take a look here to see where the Lakers rank in the NBA. And going back to their offensive rebounding, and that number one ranking in second chance buckets, I think it speaks to their tenacity and physicality. They go at you. No question about that. It's Bialica. Goes to the reverse layup and drops it in. Bialica's got his third basket of the night. And when you look at the Lakers' new front office, do you think it'll be an improvement? Time will tell, Kevin. I think that's hard to predict. The pieces certainly lean towards success, but it's a hard job. Certainly there's more credibility now. I don't think there's any question about that. The Lakers shooting is leaving something to be desired. Just 36% here in the third quarter. Lopez outside. Lakers passing it around. Ennis drops in the tray. Ennis has got eight. Minnesota shooting 71% all in all in this one. They've been brilliant offensively. Here's Jang. Score the basket. His eighth. Eight for 13 from the floor. And one of the stories of the second half has been all of those second chance points. I mean, they have been terrific on the offensive backboard. Some room here for Lopez. Off target with the open look. Jang inside. 18 points for him. Can't hit that one. Three second difference between shot clock and game clock. Here's Lopez. It's good. The assist that time for Menes. Lopez has got seven now in this quarter. And you know, when Lopez gets it rolling early, he can put up some big numbers. And there's a pattern starting to take shape here. They're working it inside and getting good shots from close range. Well, I agree with you. Four of their last five baskets have been exactly of that variety. Crawford passes to Bialica. Basket is good, and he'll get a chance for one more at the free throw line. In that tight, with that much of an advantage height-wise, there's just not a lot the defense can do. And this is his first trip to the line tonight. An 85% mark from the line. There aren't too many players in the league who are going to sport a much better percentage. You know, one thing about getting going at the free throw line like he has this season, it can continue to carry over. Mind the lanes. Mind the lanes. One shot. On the free throw, no good. And so it's Minnesota holding an unbelievable lead as the quarter wraps up. They've been playing some ferocious defense. Back right after this. And we're rolling here again with the fourth quarter. Might not come down to the wire, but you never know. We've got Crawford. Bialica is out there with Jang. Then it's Brooks. And it's George's Hunt in at the two spot. So that's the lineup for Minnesota. Ennis has got space. And it's wide right. It's off the rim. Yeah, that's just poor decision-making. He's got to be better in those situations. Greg, I just think he was in a hurry. He flat-out rushed it. I mean, I don't know what he was thinking there. He actually was in a brain-neutral position. And by elite, kicks to Brooks. And he drops it in from the low post. Brooks has got the fourth quarter started here with a bucket for the Timberwolves. The Lakers shooting a lackluster 38% for the game, struggling so far. Ennis dishes to Brewer. Out left to the wing. 
Crawford with the steal. And now the Timberwolves on the break. And a good example there of why it's important to change ends quickly. Vitally important. I mean, if you relax for a second, you're cooked. You're toast. They learned that lesson there. Here's Bryant. A good finish at the rack off the slick feed. I don't think they have anybody to blame but themselves there. I mean, that's just inexcusable to let a guy get this deep inside. The Timberwolves have gone two of four from the field since we started the final quarter of play. Here's Brooks. It's Bialica. Six for six. He's yet to miss from the field. They are just killing him on the interior. Yeah, you can't say that with enough emphasis. I mean, the defenders are just not being aggressive enough down low. You got to play with some physicality in the paint. Basket is good, and he'll get a chance for one more at the free throw line. Yeah, terrific play right there. Great strength to finish through the contact. That's exactly how it should be done. Get the bump, concentrate on the shot, and you'll get the bucket too. And a chance to catch up on some numbers here. The scoring breakdown for Minnesota. They keep piling up the assists, and they haven't cooled off at all. I've been impressed with how well they've penetrated tonight, too. Shooting one. And Clark, when you played, the NBA was still mostly American players. Now the game is truly global with players from all over the world. How do you think that has changed the NBA? Well, I think it's enhanced the NBA's product on the floor because, again, you're getting the best players in the world that are competing in the NBA with the international influx. I think it's added to the global popularity of the league without question. The NBA is clear in that we're going far and wide across the globe to find the best players to play in the best league in the world, and I think that's healthy and good. It's Crawford with the drive. Another shot, and it's sent back by Bryant. And here's Ennis. It's good from long range. Yeah, those are starting to add up, guys. Up their last five baskets, three have been tripled. And Lou Dan gets the whistle that time. That is his first foul of the game. And you can see he just didn't get squared up with his feet. Greg, those are always tough to judge, but I think the official got that one right. The Timberwolves again can't hit. L.A.'s gone one or two from three-point range here in the fourth. Ball's knocked loose. Bielitsa inside, defended by Bryant. It's really been a tale of two halves, guys. A slow start, but this quarter, he has really been the man. And that replay brought to us by Under Armour. Another Unleash Chaos moment. One of the more exciting plays in basketball. Around three minutes gone here in the fourth quarter. And another basket for the Lakers. He's just able to shoot over people at a high rate. And you are a good defender, Greg, so you tell me. How do you guard that? I mean, the height, the soft release, not a lot you can do against that combination. Count that bucket. His hard work on the backboard really just has given them more opportunities to score. Ennis kicks to Zubats. Foul call that time on the way up. That'll give him two chances at the free throw line here. Wow, they've made every free throw here two in the gentlemen. second half. And that efficiency, Greg, as you know, so critical when you're looking to overcome a deficit. You've got to be close to perfect and can't waste scoring opportunities. And he makes the first. Well, the NBA has made some adjustments to prevent the hack shack strategy following big men who can't make free throws. It still happens. Clark, is it always going to be a part of the game, do you think? I think it will be part of the game, and I don't necessarily like it. 
I would much rather see the rule be changed because I think it just enhances the quality of the product. Some would argue the strategy should be on board for poor free throw shooters. I disagree. Lakers have gotten four of their six shots to fall so far here in the fourth. A pretty nice efficiency there. Dang kicks to Zubats. Over Jang. Los Angeles with another miss. That's exactly how you want to play it defensively, Kevin. I mean, getting a hand up to distract and bother the shooter. Not easy to stop somebody this deep inside. And Los Angeles guys uh, shooting 57% in this fourth quarter. Outside Dang. Feeds to Bryant. Lakers passing it around. Out of bounds. Minnesota takes possession. And you could see he, he thought he had a little more room on that sideline and got squeezed out of bounds. That one could have been avoided. Muhammad, he's checked in for Jamal Crawford. Brooks outside. His three-pointer is off the mark. And I love how his teammates have stepped up for him. He's struggling, but they're ramping it up and getting it done this quarter. Back to Ennis. There's a screen. Here's Zubats. He's off from 17 feet. And now the Timberwolves on the break. Here's Jang. It's Bialica. It's hauled in by Los Angeles. Zubats has got his fourth rebound in this one. And Brewer kicks to Ennis. Outside Bryant. In the corner, it's Brewer. He feeds it to Ennis. Shot clock at six. And fouled on the shot, so the bucket counts and a chance for one more here. How about the wily Brewer showing some strength there? Impressive how he gets his shot off despite the contact. And referee play review is something that is still relatively new in the NBA. Uh, Clark, do you think it should be expanded? I think we should continue to modify and refine it and be careful to not look to overdo it. But we also want to make sure we're using it productively and prudently. So modify it, refine it, evaluate it each year, and try to make really good use of it in the areas where it can be most effective in enhancing the calls that are made in the game. <laughs> they are making it look easy at the free throw line here in the second half. The Lakers have gone five for nine from the field in the final quarter so far. And now only one away from being in the penalty. Yep, the next one puts them on the line, so they've got to be careful the rest of the way. Minnesota on D. Ennis passes to Bryant. Bryant is doubled. And now the Timberwolves on the break. It's Bialica. And there's the foul. It'll go on Aaron Brooks. That's his first foul. LA's gone one or two from three point range here in the fourth. Ennis kicks to Bryant. Inside, Zubats, and a strong finish with two hands. Awesome feed there. That pass was on point. Minnesota shooting in the fourth quarter, not pretty, down around 29%. Banked in off the glass. Hyalutz has got 16 points here in the second half. And that bucket adds to what has been a big difference in points in the paint between the two teams. Yeah, it's really been quite a contrast. I like the way they're attacking the middle um, at their offensive end. Bryant with a screen for Ennis. In the corner, it's Brewer. Five on the clock. Zubats, the pass to Ennis. And it's off from three-point range. And for the Timberwolves, they're shooting an incredible 64% from the field in this game. Muhammad, no luck. Lakers have gone 6 of 11 since the start of the fourth quarter. And Brewer kicks to Zubats. Muhammad with the steal. Here's Aldrich. And Cole Aldrich with the slam. Power move by Aldrich. Loves to attack when he gets it that deep. And taking care of the ball has been a problem for them. That's something that they've got to fix. While the defense has been good, a lot of these turnovers have been unforced. Clark, we have seen an influx of players who function as point forwards for their team. 
How difficult is that to deal with as a defender? I think it's really hard. I think it just speaks to the versatility of a player. If a guy has forward size but point guard skills, then I think that makes him more valuable to his team and more difficult to defend because he can start offense, not just for himself, but for his team. And that puts your defense in a little bit of a quandary as to how you're going to deal with that kind of versatility in terms of scoring and playmaking. Minnesota making a switch here. Jones has checked in, and Los Angeles making a change here as well. Channing Fries checked in for Bryant. He hits both from the stripe. Jones with it. Now guarded by Ennis. Let's the three fly. Jones, no luck. And Los Angeles guys uh, shooting 55% in the fourth. They are executing late. Ennis, good. And the shooting has really been there for him today. But he may have to take it upon himself to continue to carry this team and try and get out of this hole. Count the basket. Yeah, that was the third straight high percentage look the defense has allowed. The, the defenders have got to start putting bodies on bodies. Dang with the screen for Brewer. To the paint. Dang dishes to Fry. Sinks the three-pointer. He's starting to heat up from outside. That's his second this half. Fry has gone three of six in his three-point shooting tonight. Excellent body control that time by Muhammad. He takes the hit and still able to complete and finish his move. Lakers have gone 8 of 13 from the field since the start of the fourth, sinking the majority of their shots. And there's the call on Shabazz Muhammad. That's his first foul of the game, and the bonus will go to the free throw line. Mark, we've seen the bench celebration become almost an art form in the NBA over the past few seasons. Are you surprised this is a thing now? Not at all. Again, when everything is captured and documented and, and you're going to have creativity and attention-grabbing celebration, so... It's just part of the landscape. And he knocks down the first one. Jamal Crawford, he's checked in for the Timberwolves. And Ennis drops them both. He's done a much better job of getting to the line here. Aggressively taking it inside and not shying away from contact. I thought he was settling a bit in the first. Hey, you know, Kevin, that's what you want to see. Strong passing inside, leading to the hoop. Pass to Zubats. Stolen away. Here's Bialica, guarded by Fry. The Elitza misses. Los Angeles has gotten off four three-pointers in the final quarter, and two of them have fallen. They set the pick. Ennis passes to Brewer. Ennis sets the screen for Brewer. Crawford with the steal. And here we go. Fast break. Crawford's got it. And the basket by Jones. And aggressive defense causing the mistake, then cashing in. Yeah, that's a momentum changer for sure. You got to like the steal and the finish at the other end. That's the thing, paying that steal off with the finish. Double team on Dang. Ball's knocked loose. Six to shoot. Here's Ennis. And it's off target. Not sure why he took that one. The Timberwolves shooting 40% in the fourth. And the shot goes in. Ten points for Tyus Jones. And some guys just have a nose for scoring. And this one couldn't have been any easier. Yeah, that was actually no defense at all there, Greg. I mean, layups don't come any easier than that. I mean, they're piling it on now. Now here's Ennis. Defense is right there. And the foul on Tyler Ennis. That's foul number two for him. Gorky Dangs checked in for Cole Aldrich. And the Lakers also making a switch. Hart's checked in. There's Crawford with the three. An absolute bomb from three-point range. Lakers have gone 8 of 14 from the floor here in the fourth quarter. Doubled by Crawford. It's stolen by Jones. 
to the middle. And the dunk to finish it off. A beauty. And that's how you make a steal count. Turn it into a quick slam at the other end. It was really a case. It looked like Greg Anthony right there, if I, <laughs> if I can say so. It was really a case of a great defensive play triggering some instant mm -hmm. offense. Yeah, I remember G.A. as an irritant. And this guy, much like Greg, creating havoc out there. And Jang gets it to go. Kevin, that's high percentage distance for Jang there and doing it with a hand in his face. Los Angeles has gotten three of their six three-pointers to fall here in the fourth. That's tipped. Here's Hart. And Fry has it in the corner. His three-pointer is off the mark. Hard to figure out how he doesn't knock that one down. No defender in sight. Offensive rebound. Crawford and the rebound paying off as they pick up two on the second chance bucket right there. And so it's going to end up in the record books as a blowout, a dominating performance for the Timberwolves. It was a standout performance across the board. I mean, it was like watching a cat play with a mouse. They, they were able to do more or less whatever they wanted. And this will make it 36 wins on the air for them. And one of the key components to this victory, if not the biggest, was the incredible performance for Carl Anthony Towns. He did all the dirty work that they needed, clearing out space underneath and securing rebounds. Here's Hart, defended by Jones. Here's Brewer. No good with the triple. And even without that three ball dropping for him, the defense should have done more on that last play. Oh, great effort there. That's how you defend the paint. Exactly. Can't play it any better than that, Greg. Now the feed to Dang, and Fry has it in the corner. Out of bounds, Minnesota takes possession. Ryan is checked in for the Lakers. Minnesota calls timeout. One thing that Tom Thibodeau can be depended on as a coach is giving his star players a lot of minutes. In fact, in Chicago, Clarkson criticized him for doing that. Others praised him for it. But the fact of the matter is, if you're a team leader, he expects you to be on the floor a lot and produce a lot. Yeah, and you know, that's part of the job. Hey, when you get right down to it, if you're one of the best players, you've got to show up and do your job all the time. And you look at players who've played under Thibodeau. I mean, he's had the league leader in average minutes three times in his career as a coach. Said himself that he expects his guys to get used to what star players do, which includes a lot of minutes. chance now to recognize our Jordan player of the game, Carl Anthony Towns. And Kevin, it, it's a no-brainer. He's controlled every aspect of this game and it's just so fun to see a player perform at a level that's just higher than anyone else out on the floor. What a connection he has to these fans. They love him here. And the more he has games like this, the deeper that connection gets. Here's Jones, lays it up and banks it in. I'll tell you what, the energy in this arena, you can feel it. Big time, I mean, it's amazing. Their crowd letting them hear it, and that's always inspiring. They want to see this thing get wrapped up. Hart, no good. Jones with it. He's picked up by Dang. And plenty of contact on the shot, so two free throws coming up. And there's the foul against the Lakers. Gentlemen, two shots. Move shots. And the first one drops.
Both shots good from the strike. 26 seconds left in the fourth quarter. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by Jones. Here's Hart, defended by Jones. Knocks it loose. Outside Bryant. Bryant is doubled. Just five to shoot. It's stolen by Jones. Finished off the break. And that's a killer instinct on display as they try to put this one on ice. And you know, this is what's needed at this point in the game, Greg. The great teams know how to close it out. First one falls for him. Both shots good from the strike. Let's it go from the wing. No good. So it's Minnesota winning this one easily. They won this game going away. They were the better basketball team by far tonight. And you got to commend this sort of dominance, particularly here at home. It's a great feeling when you play almost a perfect game and to have that crowd be so pumped up. It's time now to go courtside as we send you over to David Aldridge from the sideline. David, take it away. Thanks, Kevin. Jimmy, you have been outspoken about the need for maximum effort. Was it part of your plan to grab wins like the one we saw tonight? It wasn't a part of my plan, but whatever works, works. I think we got a, a bunch of talented guys, and at times we forget how hard we got to play. On the road at home, this is how we got to play basketball. Jimmy, thanks for the time, man. Back to you, Kevin. David, thank you as always. And that's going to do it tonight, folks, for our broadcast. For Greg Anthony, Clark Kellogg, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan saying thanks for watching. So long, everyone.